guess who's back, baby? What's going on, y'all? It's Icon back again. Uh, I first, let me just start by saying I haven't put anything on the channel in a while. I do apologize about that. Um, I'm currently shooting an independent film. We're doing, it's an action film. We're doing trainings. We're doing rehearsals. And I've been busy doing that. I'm also in the midst of rebranding my channel. Um, I have a brand new logo. The name of the channel will change. Details on that coming up. But as long as you subscribe to my channel, you'll get the notification once the rebranding happens. And I hope you enjoy the new content that I put up because I'm going to put up my independent film stuff. I'm going to start putting up more video game content. We're going to do more reviews based off of wrestling, based off of superhero television. I'm talking, um, you know, Arrow, Flash, Supergirl, Black Lightning. Um, maybe I'll do Jessica Jones, Cloak and or Dagger. So I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff coming soon. You just got to bear with me. Seeing as how I missed out on doing a... What are the, what are the last two pay-per-views? Seeing as how I missed out on doing a Money in the Bank pay-per-view and I didn't do a Saudi Arabia pay-per-view, Saudi Arabia pay-per-view, <laughs> I thought um, I would definitely do a Battleground. Um, it was a, you know, it was a decent card. Um, and, and then to be honest, um, at the end of the day, I got to say, I actually did enjoy the pay-per-view. It was a good, it was a, it was a good, I mean, it wasn't the greatest pay-per-view of all time, but I, I didn't watch it thinking like, oh, this thing is really boring. It wasn't boring. Like it actually had a lot of good, it had a lot of good stuff in it. Um, so we're going to go through that right now. And like I said, you know, just thanks for, um, you know, for supporting and hopefully, you know, you like the new stuff that I got coming soon. So let's get into this pay-per-view because I got to go to work in the morning. Okay, so our first matchup was the pre-show match for the Cruiserweight Championship between um, Gulag, the champion Tony Nice, and Akira Tozawa. Uh, I gotta be honest, I was out um, running some errands, getting some food, so I missed the pre-show. And I'm a little upset by that because I actually wanted to see the Cruiserweight match because I'm a, I'm a Drew Gulag fan. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a Drew Gulag fan. And... You know, he's been doing the tour. He's been going to NXT. He's been going to NXT UK. He's been doing 205 Live stuff. The guy can wrestle. Like, the guy's really good. The guy can work. And, I mean, I never understood why Tony Nese even got the championship. I mean, even Buddy Murphy. I'm like, his his title reign was very um, lackluster at best. And, you know, it's... But I think, I think a guy like Drew Gulak, he can do better for the division than what the other two guys did. So, I'm definitely happy for him. Happy he got the belt. And... I will be watching 205 Live this uh, this Wednesday because I want to... Well, Wednesday or Tuesday? I think Tuesday, yeah. <laughs> I'll be watching it this Tuesday because I honestly want to see what Drew Gulag's going to do now because, like I said, I'm a huge fan of the guy and he deserves it. To open the show was the Raw Women's Championship between the lady, Lacey Evans, and the man, Becky Lynch. Um, I was shocked that this match went first, but not... Uh, but I guess at the same time, it's like... You know, Becky wasn't going to lose. <laughs> so, you know, so it's kind of like, well, we all know Becky's not going to lose to Lacey Evans, so it's, let's just get this over with, get it out of the way. So, I mean, I wasn't I wasn't mad that this match opened. Um, I mean, and plus, like, Seth Rollins, his match closed, and I kind of feel like they did that shit on purpose. It's like, have Becky go first, have Seth go last, so this way both of them have to stay for the entire show. <laughs> and they don't, um, and the two of them don't pair up and, uh, and leave together. Uh, but I mean, it was a, it was a good match for Lacey Evans. You know, she came out in a new with some new attire. Uh, you know, I said there's really not too much to say. Like the match was good. It was a good back and forth. Lacey put up a better fight than she did. And in the end, um, Becky, she uh, yanked her. <laughs> there was a spot. Let me uh, let me backtrack for a second. There was a spot where uh, Becky Lynch put on a normal cross arm breaker on Lacey, and then Michael Cole started screaming the disarmor. And I'm like, I don't remember the disarmor being Becky laying on her back. Michael Cole's an idiot, but uh, <laughs> I digress. Uh, yeah, but so the match ended where Lacey, like Becky, was down. Lacey got on the top. Uh, she got on the separate, the second rope, as though she was gonna do maybe like a like a, a drop elbow off the rope or whatever. And then Becky just popped up, yanked her off the second rope, and when Lacey hit the floor, you know she put her in the disarmor, and Lacey immediately tapped out. Now, I don't have anything against Lacey Evans. I like Lacey Evans. I'm actually a, I'm a fan of Lacey Evans. I like her music and everything. But she didn't have like three or four title matches. She's like, you know, it's like she's had match after match after match. And I'm just like, if they don't, if they don't 
move Lacey on to something else, they're actually going to ruin her character because people are going to get tired of seeing her fight for championships. I mean... I mean, half the women's roster is either injured or disappeared. Like, Lord knows. I mean, I know Ruby Riot is having surgery. Lord knows what happened to Liv Morgan. Uh, Sarah Logan, I heard, is on suit, is wrestling on um on main event. You know, so there are, there are a lot of girls out right now. But Naomi's still on the roster. Last time I checked, she's a former two-time SmackDown Women's Champion who won the championship against Alexa Bliss in her hometown of Orlando, Florida. So give Naomi the shot. Give give like let Natty go heel and give Natty the shot, but um, I mean I know Vince has his obsession with blondes whatever, but the Lacey Evans thing as far as the championship is concerned is over. So hopefully tomorrow we'll move on from that and Becky will have a new challenger that's not Lacey Evans or Charlotte. <laughs> After that was the tag team match between Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and the New Day. Um, you know, Biggie. At first, what, like when the match started, you know, like they immediately like, you know, like they super kicked Biggie, knocked him off the apron. Then they they beat the living hell. Like Xavier Woods, like, Xavier Woods was the first of um a few competitors tonight who took a savage beating. Like when they talk about time to kick out, like a couple of people actually got their ass kicked tonight, and Xavier Woods was one of them. Um, they jumped him right out the gate. They separated him from Biggie. They wet, they wore him out for you know for the majority of the match. And I thought that, you know, to be honest, I, the reason why they did that, I assumed it was because since Biggie had just came off of his surgery, I didn't think that they would put him in a situation where he had to do a lot of fighting, a lot of movement. I was wrong, though, because once he got the hot tag, the boy was flying all over the place. And even when he did his classic spear the guy through the ropes and the crowd popped and went crazy for it, you know, they, the whole, all four competitors even got a chant of, this is awesome. I'm just like, bro, like, should you be doing that after the surgery that you just had? So, I mean, he's, he's liable to pop his shoulder out or something but he seemed like he seemed to be okay he seemed to be okay but towards the end of the match because he did that spear to Sami Zayn out to the floor it took him out of the equation and both him and Sami were out for the count Woods went you know Woods climbed the top rope because he was going to go for his um like when he goes to the corner then walks over a little bit and then does the spring um the springboard elbow he went for the, he tried to go for that but Kevin Owens stopped him you know got him off, knocked him off the top rope gave him the stunner and that was realistic to me because after the beating that <laughs> that Xavier Woods took, there was no reason why he would have kicked out of that out of out of that punishment he took towards the end. So, uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens get a win, which is good for them because they are in desperate need of one. So when SmackDown comes, there'll be plenty of ish talking. I mean, I wish they would stop with the stupid. Uh, was this the thing the wild card rule? Like, I wish they just stopped the wild card rule. Just tr just have have Kevin and Sammy on the same show, you know, and let's just move, you know, like, let's just, like, have them go for the tag, hell, put them on Raw, have them go for the tag team championships, you know, the, have them do something, because, I mean, because now that they got, the, I mean, maybe they'll feed with New Day a little bit more, who knows, but, uh, good match by both teams, and, um, I think the right team won with, uh, Kevin and Sammy, because New Day will be all right, no matter what. So after that was the United States Championship match between Rick O'Shea and the boy Joe, Samoa Joe. Um, <laughs> right out the gate when Ricochet got to the ring he did his usual because every time he comes to the ring he slides in he does like a front flip bounce off the ropes into a, a back flip and then he lands on like one knee and basically he tried to do that but he came out with one of them um, with one of his shoulder pad things with the long tassels and the flailing thing he tried to do it while he still had the shoulder piece on and I think he tripped over it and when he did the back flip he slipped and he landed um basically like flat face but he popped back up and did the knee and tried to front like you know no one saw that but uh <laughs> you know which i thought was pretty funny but he it was a good save like if i didn't catch it it definitely would have been a good save and then he made up for it by climbing the top rope and then he did a backflip off the top rope to show everybody you know to put some respect on his name uh joe came out and talk about again like we're going back to like kicking ass and taking names joe beat the living piss <laughs> <laughs> ricochet there were moments where he got clotheslined and did the 360 he took forearm shots to the side of the head and you know it, it boy took a beating like <laughs> the crowd the crowd was a little pro joe um you know during this match like they chanted joe a little bit but i mean but after you see what ricochet went through like how could you not cheer for this guy <laughs> you know to get the victory there was even a moment that that the commentary team ignored where he with joe threw ricochet against the ropes 
and then Ricochet ran towards him, and he basically ran up Samoa Joe's chest and did like a backflip and landed on his feet. You know, the match, uh, you know, the match ended towards the end where, you know, he went for, like, uh, Ricochet went for the, he went for the, the 720 or the 930, whatever he calls it, and, you know, Joe dodged it, he rolled through, and he was able to, I forgot how he got him in position, but he, you know, he basically, um, you know, like, because I remember when he, when he did that, Joe came back with the clothesline and almost took his boots off. <laughs> oh, no, he tried for it again, he tried, he tried for the 630 again, and then, and then I think Corey Graves was like, uh, like he got his feet under. No, like Joe, Joe went for a clothesline, and when Joe clotheslined him, Ricochet kind of like rolled through it, and then he was able to knock Joe down, and then he got the six thirty, the seven ninety, eighty five or whatever. Basically, he got Joe flat on the mat. He went for his finisher move, the nine twenty or whatever, and when he did those flips. It was a perfect landing where, like, his back hit the stomach and the chest of Samoa Joe to the point where you can really believe that all the air got sucked out of Samoa Joe. Ricochet hit Joe so hard. Ricochet bounced. After after Ricochet's back landed on Joe's chest and stomach, Ricochet ricocheted into the air, and he landed, like, two feet away from Joe and had to run over to get the pin. And, you know, he got the pin and he got the victory. Ricochet is the new United States champion. And I know a lot of people are going to be upset about that because they're just like, oh, Samoa Joe is treated unfairly. But go first of all, I'm glad Samoa Joe finally got a chance to have, like, a legitimate match. Because Joe hasn't had a legitimate one-on-one -on -one match in a long time. With that being said, he lost the United States Championship to Ray. He didn't win it back. He was handed the championship. So Joe never should have had the belt to begin with. You know, and it's good to see Ricochet with the title because maybe now there'll be some fresh fuse. There'll be some new blood. I mean, I'd like to see Joe get a rematch, but I'm not mad that Joe lost that title because Joe will get it back. And maybe Joe will move on to something else. Maybe, maybe Samoa Joe will be the next person to challenge Seth Rollins. Like, I know we didn't get to the championship match yet, but, I mean, let's be serious. Baron Corbin's not winning that title. But <laughs> congratulations to Ricochet. You know, hopefully they, they give you some meaningful feuds and something positive can come out of you being the new United States champion. They did do this cool thing where when he went to the back, he was met by some of the wrestlers who, you know, like they were congratulating him. And even Triple H was there to congratulate him and like shake his hand, you know, being an NXT, being a you know, former NXT guy. So that was cool to see. So congrats to Ricochet. Like I said, you know, new, new um, United States champion. And I'm very interested to see what he does going forward. SmackDown Tag Team Championship match was next. Uh, Heavy Machinery, they came out. You know, the, to be honest, in the beginning, the crowd was fine with them in the beginning. Like, they didn't get booed or anything. But once Daniel Bryan came out, I mean, this was obviously, like, yes country. And the fans were just, the fans' attitude was, hey, we know that Bryan's a heel. We know we're supposed to cheer for Tucker and Otis. But Daniel Bryan's the hometown boy, and screw that. We're going to cheer for Daniel Bryan. And they cheered for Daniel Bryan. They cheered, yes. There were chants of, we recycle. We recycle. They were doing chants like buy a Prius. And, you know, they, the, it's Daniel Bryan country. To the point where even Heavy Machinery had to acknowledge it. But um, it was still a good match. You know, like a lot of people give um, Heavy Machinery, you know, a bad rap because they're a comedy act. But they put on a good match. You know, like Otis was able to match power for power with, uh, with Rowan. And how often do you see that? But, you know, thanks to... Um, well, I can't even say, like, they cheated. Like, Tucker, there was a point where, like, Daniel Bryan was down for the count. Tucker came in. Um, Bryan got him with the roll-up. And Bryan basically pinned him with a schoolboy roll-up. So, you know, it was a good, solid tag team match. Like, you know, Bryan and Rowan should still be the champions. And, you know, this was this was the first outing for, for Heavy Machinery. And they got to they gotta do a little bit more before, um, you know, they can get their hands on the, on, on the gold. I mean, I know that's probably contradictory seeing how Ricochet just won the belt. But, you know... It, it just it feels different with Ricochet. Ricochet felt more important. Like, even in NXT, Otis and um, Tucker didn't feel like they, they earned their stripes yet. So, but now, but to be honest, the match was good. And because both of those guys, you know, like, busted their ass to put on a performance for the crowd, the crowd wasn't rooting for them the entire fight, but they, the crowd came around. Like, towards the end of the match, the crowd actually came around, and they gave, you know, all four men, you know, the respect that they deserved in that matchup. So I was happy for them, and, you know... 
I said, and, and, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad Brian and Rowan won. And, you know, we'll see who are the next challengers for them going forward. But hats off to Heavy Machinery because they did a good job. And I can't wait to see what they do going forward. SmackDown Women's Championship match followed next. Uh, Alexa Bliss with Nikki Cross in her corner versus Bayley. Um, shout out to H. Dot the Boss, who, uh, <laughs> when we did our WrestleMania review, he basically trashed Bailey in that entire segment, and now she's a champion. Go figure. Um, but this was, this went exactly how I thought it was gonna go. You know, it was a good match between both girls. Nikki Cross got involved. There was a moment where Bailey accidentally hit Nikki. You know, and then she Nikki tried to come in the ring. The referee was distracted. You know, she went. Alexa went for Twisted Bliss. Bailey got the knees up. You know, she hit the Bailey to belly, and Alexa Bliss basically lost. So, <laughs> no surprise there because Alexa's not even a SmackDown superstar, so she shouldn't have won the title anyway. Uh, hats off to Baby, um, Baby. <laughs> hats off to Bailey. Uh, you know, and um, we'll see. Get, I mean, put Alexa. I mean, well, hell, have Alexa. No, I don't want Alexa Bliss to feud with um the feud. You know what? I don't want Alexa Bliss to feud with Becky, but I'll take an Alexa Becky feud because I know Alexa's not going to win the title. Ultimately, I would like to see a Naomi um, Becky Lynch feud, but um, but when it comes to SmackDown, like who could challenge? Who can challenge Bailey now? That's not Charlotte. I mean, uh, I mean, and sticking with the, I mean, I mean, I don't want to promote the blonde movement, but you could have Mandy, you could have M- Mandy Rose fight her for the title. You could have Ember Moon fight her for the title. Like, you know. Like, Bailey has challengers. Like, there are a lot of, there's, like, where, where the hell is Lana? <laughs> you know, like, what happened to Lana? Let Selena Vega fight her. Um, just stop putting raw chicks on SmackDown and SmackDown. Like, I, 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 I love the brand split. I hate the, um, the wild card. SmackDown has a good roster. Let them fight. <laughs> so, congrats to Bailey, and we're moving on. Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. Not really much to say. <laughs> Shane McMahon was out there. Shane McMahon got involved. Roman Reigns beat him. After that was over, Shane challenged Roman Reigns to a two-on-one handicap match on Raw. So I'm a little interested in that. We'll see how that goes. But I'm going to be honest. Like, I thought Drew should have won. I thought Drew should have won because, you know, Roman beat him at Mania. And if they insist on having this feud continue, it would have been nice to see Drew actually get the win. Um, He didn't get the win. That's very disappointing. Nothing else to say here. I mean, Roman won, like, I guess, you know, <laughs> we're moving on. Nothing really to say. Then there was, in my in my opinion, the true main event of the evening. Steel cage match. Dolph Ziggler against Kofi Kingston, baby. Um, I mean, again, as far as an outcome is concerned, we knew Kofi was going to win because one Dolph was presented as a placeholder challenger, you know, and he's a raw guy. So, I mean, that's the thing. Like any, any SmackDown versus raw matchup, you knew that the champion wasn't going to lose the belt. So, but the, the interesting thing about the cage match, the two of them, cause it's, it's sometimes like when it comes to a cage match, it's hard to sell the realism of the cage match as far as like, the person escaping from the cage or somebody trying to climb out of the cage. These two actually did a really good job of making it seem realistic. And I have to give them props for that. Like they made the steel cage match seem interesting. How they would um, you know, go get each other from off top of the cage, how, you know, Ziggler was crawling, you know, to try to get in and Kofi would stop him. They were using the turnbuckle to get leverage to try to pull the other person from you know from crawling out. There was a moment where Dolph hit Kofi with the super kick, and Kofi almost fell out of the cage door. And then D- Ziggler had to dive and go get him. You know, it was it was it was very. It, it started off a little slow, maybe for like the first like couple of minutes, but you know it picked up after a while. And the way it ended was you know like towards the end, the cage door was open. Uh, Dolph was trying to climb out. Kofi had him by the foot. Dolph got up, and then he super kicked Kofi. And once he super kicked him, everybody was like, Kofi's out. You know, like, Kofi's out. And even if Kofi's not out, there's no way Kofi's going to be able to get up and crawl over to Ziggler in enough time to pull Ziggler out of the cage. Because at that point, half of Ziggler's body was already out of the cage. And then, again, this is why, this is why I like Kofi. This is why Kofi's my dude, because in a very in, in, innovative way, <laughs> and when he did it, I was kind of like... You know, that actually makes perfect sense. Why has no one done this before? Dolph Ziggler's got half of his body outside the cage trying to crawl out. Kofi got up, 
ran towards the door because Zig- cause Ziggler was under the bottom rope. Uh, Kofi ran, dove through the second rope, and basically just catapulted himself onto the ground. And, you know, he hit the floor before Ziggler did, and Kofi won the match. So, yeah, like, kudos to Kofi, my man KK, for, um, you know, for coming up with some new-ish. You know, he won the belt. Uh, they interviewed him afterwards. And, you know, he was just like, yeah, I'm still the champ, baby. And, you know, it's still new day for life. So, I'm happy about that. Like, I'm definitely happy about that. I'm glad Kofi still got the belt. I mean, I knew he would keep it, but the thing is, I'm entertained by his run because I like how Kofi's making his matches interesting. Like, he's keeping them fresh. Like, he's keeping them, you know, he's keeping them engaged. And, I mean, we'll see. I mean, I'd love, personally, as his, as far as his next challenger is concerned, I would love to see him face Shelton Benjamin. Because if we're sitting here talking about somebody who deserves it or it should have been me, the whole it should have been me gimmick should have belonged to Shelton Benjamin because Shelton Benjamin was the original Kofi Kingston. And yes, I'm saying that because he's black. You know, <laughs> Shelton Benjamin was the original Kofi Kingston doing the ladder matches and then doing the WrestleMania stuff, doing the Royal Rumble stuff, doing the Battle Royal stuff. And then, you know, Shelton left the company and then Kofi took his place. So if anything, they could do a whole storyline based on the fact that Shelton Benjamin is upset because he was supposed to be the first black champion and Kofi became the first black champion. You know, and I'd, I'd like to see that matchup at SummerSlam. So that's just my personal opinion, but uh, we'll see what happens. No 24-7 action tonight with the 24-7 title. And uh, I was a little disappointed about that. So we're moving on to the Universal Championship match. So the final match of the evening was the Universal title match that nobody cared about. Seth Rollins versus Baron Corbin. But I have to say, like, the match turned out to be entertaining after all. And it had nothing to do with the actual wrestling or the participants Bear, and but whoever came up with this whoever came whoever wrote the story for this was uh, you know i gotta give pro- like i'm not gonna i'm not one of those people that just trashes everything for the sake of trashing it whoever came up with the story for this match actually did a damn good job and made it entertaining first of all baron corbin had lacey evans as the special guest referee because when seth rollins came to the ring he came to the ring with a steel chair <laughs> you know, ready to beat the crap out of whoever the uh, the referee was. So Baron Corbin chose Lacey Evans, which I thought was genius because Seth isn't going to beat a woman with a chair. But the ins- the unfortunate side about this was because, I mean, we all knew where this was coming. Once Lacey Evans came out, we knew it was only a matter of time before Becky Lynch showed up. And the first thing that came to my mind was like, Oh, great. Well, on the one hand, this is kind of interesting. But then on the other hand, that means we're getting more Lacey versus Becky. So, uh, but to their credit, it took Becky a long time before she actually came out. Um, Lacey did serve as the referee. She cheated her ass off. She had the slowest counts of all time. She let she let Baron Corbin whoop on Seth Rollins with the chair, and then she took the chair from him. You know, she restarted the match two or three times, you know, making it no count out, no disqualification. And, you know, finally, she, you know, when they couldn't beat Seth Rollins, she hit Rollins with the low blow. And then when she hit him with the low blow, um, Corbin gave him the end of days. And as soon as Corbin hit the end of days, then Becky Lynch came running out. And I like that they didn't play her theme music because, you know, the two of them are dating. Everybody knows that they're dating. And WWE made their relationship public. And I think they did it for this purpose right here, which, again, I'm I'm on board with. Uh, Becky came in and beat the living fire (laughs) out of Lacey Evans. The uh, the referee who quote unquote screwed Corbin over in Saudi Arabia ended up taking over, and you know as soon as Corbin saw it, it was the same referee, he got upset. But then he took a super kick to the face, uh, took a curb stomp. Match was over. Seth Rollins wins. Um, you know him and Becky embraced each other. Becky smacked him on the ass, and the two of them walked off into the sunset. Which means tomorrow on Raw we're gonna get a mixed tag team match between Lacey Corbin, Becky, and Rollins. But again, like I said, the match itself was entertaining, so I can't really complain about that. And in my opinion, the next challenger for Seth Rollins or the next challenger at SummerSlam needs to be Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley wasn't even on the show. He should have been on the show. Finn Balor wasn't on the show, and he's the Intercontinental Champion. Uh, there were the Revival weren't weren't on the show, and they're the Raw and they're the Raw Tag Team Champions. So, two two championships, if you want to count the twenty four seven championship, three champion. Oh well, shit. Then the Iconics, if you want to count four championships, uh, four championships, and Bobby Lashley not represented tonight. You got to do better than that. 
It's a four-hour pay-per-view. You got a two-hour pre-show. You, you basically have a, well, it wasn't a two-hour pre-show. You got a one-hour pre-show. You got a four-hour pay-per-view. There's no reason why four championships of Bobby Lashley should be left off the show. Just saying. <laughs> so that was WWE stomping grounds, kicking ass, and taking names. Um, good show. You know, like I said, the the, the show didn't suck. <laughs> like the show had a lot of good moments. You know, and to be honest, the things about the show that were good, the in-ring stuff that was good. You know, the 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 storytelling main events. You know, Kofi, how Kofi won the match. You know. Getting, you know, getting getting the women involved in the WWE Universal Championship match because I like when the women get involved, you know, like having a woman be a referee, like that was actually pretty cool, you know, like I thought that was really good, like having a female be a referee, like the storytelling was was good, like because it's starting to make sense and I hope they do more of this going forward and they build on it. I mean, my whole thing is I'm just tired of seeing certain people interact and certain people fight each other, but overall I have no problem with what they did tonight so that was it that was my kicking ass and taking names battle ground no not battleground stomping ground pay-per-view i uh, hope you enjoyed it i'll definitely be back to do the next pay-per-view and like i said i got some more stuff coming soon i got a street fighter video coming out um in a couple of days you know for the ring of justice um some ring of justice matches hope you enjoy that so keep it locked and until next time as always i'm out this bitch